So uh, welcome to the Photographer Academy and another talk photography. This time we're with fine art nude photographer Dave uh, McKellistrom. Dave, welcome. Thanks for joining me. Thanks a lot, Mark. Really appreciate it. Uh, did I pronounce your name right? Because I'm useless with a name yeah, like Cleghorn. It's, uh, it's pretty, yeah. pretty remarkable. So it's great. It's pure luck. Um, so um, from your accent, I gather you're not in UK or a part of Europe. Whereabouts are you based? Uh, near Toronto. So in oh, Canada. I love and, uh, yeah, it's not the most pretty part of Canada, but it's uh, it's still good. So. Toronto is gorgeous. Yeah, the city's great, but uh, yeah. the west has mountains, the east has oceans, and we have lakes and flatland for the most part. So, but well, yeah. it sounds but, it sounds pretty ideal to me, anyway. Kind of thing. Dave, um, thanks uh, for joining me. Um, look, we're here to talk about your fine art nude photography, um, and we're looking at eight stroke nine of the Im images. Um, before we get into the kind of the photographs, uh, let's talk a little bit about you. How uh, how did you kind of get involved in photography in the first place? Where did it all start? Uh, it started as a and as, as an escape from work, really. I, uh, I'm a I'm an accountant, and so nobody actually likes accounting. So needed a, a stress relief, and photography was something I'd always been interested in. And in 2011, I started to do landscape photography. And did that for seven years. Um, it wasn't right if there was any people at all in the images. It was just landscapes. I traveled to Europe. I traveled to the U.S. and Canadian West Coast. Um, kind of took a U.S. West Coast approach to landscapes. Went on a couple tours and stuff like that. And uh, and so that was how I got into photography. And then, uh, as with anybody who starts out. Uh, the first, the first shoot I did, I thought, well, I'm pretty good. I've got 500 great shots from this this first shoot, and uh, and now looking back on that shoot, there's one of those shots that's kind of holding on to my landscape portfolio. So it was uh, seven years later in 2018, it got uh, not boring, but it was. Um, I did a trip to Death Valley, and my goal was three portfolio worthy shots for the week. So things had changed a little bit. I was having some problems with my knees and my hips and and uh, getting fatter. So that's not a good thing for landscape photography with the hiking. And uh, so I decided that maybe I should try some people photography and that's kind of how I, I got uh, uh, at least into the people side of things. So. And, and did you jump straight into nude in the people, the people photography or did it kind of start on the streets or portraiture? How did it? Because, you know, nude photography in its own right is kind of a, a really small niche, isn't it? Not only because of what people think about photographing nudes. I'm sure your friends have kind of said some really kind of weird things to you, like my my friends have. Uh, oh, I'll carry a bag and all those kind of things. And it's that kind of little jove, uh, the jovial. Then you have the consumer who looks at it a, diff, a diff, different way. Uh, how How was the transition? How did it start for you then? Yeah, so I started looking for a workshop, and I, I was looking for a particular style of photography. I really enjoy the um, kind of chiaroscuro, light and dark um, type of painting and photography. So I was looking for a photographer that did that type of work. And so probably for about six months, I was looking online for workshops and would have went anywhere to do that. Um, and then uh, having dinner with my wife about six months later, I finally mentioned it to her that I was thinking of doing this. And she basically said, you're, you're an idiot because there's a guy in town here that does exactly that. So I wasn't aware of him, but I, I contacted him and did a uh, um, kind of a, a strobe one day workshop with him privately, then did a couple of other workshops uh, that uh, were probably, uh, were primarily uh, introduced light workshops in the next yep. year and a half. And so we went, I went to uh, uh, an event where I met a model who was also a art nude photographer and model. It wasn't an art nude event. And uh, one of the things I'd been thinking of, uh, my dad unfortunately passed away when he was 50 years old from a pretty rare disease. And he loved nudes. He had some nude art. Uh, he loved all all types of nudes, and so I, and he loved photography. But he never really had a chance to um, 
explore that with his job. And so I thought, what, what a great tribute as I turned 50 um, four and a half years ago that uh, to, a tribute to him to, to start in art nude photography. But I didn't want to do glamour or sexualized content. Uh, not that I have anything against that. It just wasn't right for me. And so I uh, did my first shoot on my own um, with a model in um, January of 2020, right before COVID. Okay. And it was, it was an art nude shoot. So. Wow. But pretty, uh, pretty new to all this then, because you'd never tell that from your port, uh, your portfolio of images. They're, they're really quite established in style. So to think that it's only, what, four, four years and COVID's been in the way as well within things, really, that's that's quite incredible. Before uh, before we get into the images, uh, there, there's one of them that I went, oh, my God, that's the same color palette as, color palette as Vermeer. Uh, and I'm a bit of a fan and, and things of, you know, several painters of old and things. We'll get to it. But has art played any kind of, you know, influence for you at all? Or is it purely from photographers or from your own head? Yeah, I think increasingly so over time. Um, when I used to travel, I used to go to a museum and, and went to the Louvre, but spent an hour just walking through and went to see the Mona Lisa and David and and walked walked out basically so didn't really have a a, a real interest um, before i started photography but since particularly people photography i do when i do travel what, wherever i am i try to to seek out uh, a museum and 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 just observe how the painters painted light um and so i'm really drawn to to directional light and the painting of directional light and and i think uh, Vermeer and uh, Caravaggio and Edward Hopper and uh, different all different styles with the three of them, but uh, all very directional light and and so I, I seek that out now when I when I go go to uh, travel. So mm, very good. Look, let's have a, a jump into one photograph anyway, and we'll kind of catch up with other things as we go through. You were saying to me that you've just kind of retired. So how do you see your kind of photography now? Is it going to be fuller on as it were or is family life still tying you to the uh to home as it were or what's your kind of plans well my wife would say it's probably been full on for the last four years even though i've worked full time because i've spent yeah. a lot of time at it um covid helped um a lot from a from a having time to process and uh, for at least for color photography i really want to develop a painterly style so I think right before a COVID lockdown, I did two four-hour shoots. And I think there was like a two or three-month COVID lockdown right afterwards. And I think I processed 130 shots from two four-hour shoots, okay. um, which is kind of um, trying to develop what I wanted from a, from a look perspective. And, and I think I processed in four and a half years over 2,500 images. Um, so it's been pretty full on from, from that perspective. Um, but basically, I've just been shooting and editing. I haven't had time to go back and look at the portfolio really and cull and say, here's my best work. And and because uh, I'm I'm drawn to everything that I've processed in some way. And so I think maybe the next step is getting some help in terms of curating some of the work and putting it out there in a more formalized way. And and uh, but I do enjoy it. And I have other retirement goals in terms of I really enjoy trying to be mediocre at things that I'm not very good at. So I've got a lot of things I'm not very good at. So, uh, so, so, so there's, there's I painting. I can your whole drawing, list of mine. <laughs> yeah, so, it's, so it's, it's good. good that way. Yeah. So I think. So, what, what about this image? Let's, let's get going. What, what's the inspiration? What's the idea uh, uh, behind this photograph? Yeah. So this ties into basically starting the first, 10 or so shoots I did, um, it, probably very unusual that I was going for this idea in all 10 of those shoots. Um, uh, my family and myself had struggled with some mental health problems and I wanted to make the photography, I wanted to have a tie to the photography, I wanted to make it personal. Um, and that mental health struggle was personal from a family perspective and from a personal perspective. So, I'd come up with this idea that um, um, I, I wanted to treat nudity as not the subject, but as a um, 
as benefiting the story or the mood or emotion of the piece not not the first thing you look at but the sec the, the as a as a as a uh, something that adds to the image and so these images there's about i don't know 15 or 16 of them now um basically is the same model twice in the image and on the right nude it's kind of real self uh, nudity representing real self and vulnerability and how you are when you're alone and the clothed self is more of a mask you have to wear when you're dealing with other people. And I tried to weave different stories in here. There's some details in here like the banana and that could be, um, that, that adds to the potential story. And uh, so there's a, I may revisit this series because I'm, I'm not looking back at this series. My processing isn't as refined as, it, as I'm, I think it is now. So. But uh, that was kind of the genesis of the art nude photography for me was trying to get a series of this type of work where the model was composited in twice and, and that kind of feeling. Has your kind of um, definitive of what you were as a fine art nude photographer in the beginning, has that changed radically already? Obviously, it's quite a short period of time, but have you found like a, a new direction of where you're going to? Is it something that you're focusing in on more? It's a, it's a it's a good timely question because I am thinking about that a lot right now. I've basically pursued the same themes, kind of the the even if it's not obvious to others, um, it, it's as I said, it's personal to me. So I'm trying to explore the isolation, disconnectedness, emptiness, sadness, etc. of mental health struggle. And uh, and then going to a, a hope and healing and and, and self actualized self confidence kind of the whole gamut from that perspective. Mm -hmm. um, so most of my work has fit into one of those three buckets um, in the four four years. The last six months I've tried some different things, um, but I'm not sure exactly where I'm going. If I'm connecting as well with the, it's less personal. Some of the work that some I, I tried some more helmet mutant style. Um, nudes and stuff like that lately, and I'm not sure if I'm connecting with it as well as as as, as the type of work I had been doing. So I'm a, at a bit of a crossroads now. So ask me again in a year, and we'll uh, we'll see we'll see what the answer is then. So it's a date. Okay, <laughs> it's, it's a date now. Um, so uh, this uh, this model, did she become a bit of a muse? Are you photographing the same local models? Um, you know, have you found your muse? Do you do you kind of uh, kind of work together with the same model more often than not, or, or, or are you in kind of a discovery of new bodies? Yeah, this model particularly is, uh, I, I was supposed to go to China right before COVID, or, or I guess it was already in China for a landscape photography trip. And uh, once that was no longer possible, I actually went to London and, and Edinburgh and shot a bunch of uh, art nudes. And so this is a, uh, uh, an English model um, who actually stopped modeling about two months after this. Okay. Um, but in general, I do like to work. Uh, I've never really, I, I, I really respect art nude models as, as talented individuals. It's amazing how, um, not as models, but as people, how much talent there is in this industry. Uh, photographers, painters, academics, business people. Um, I think, uh, and, and finding people that can can deal with the emotion I'm looking with in an image is is the key to to models. So there's a couple of local models I work with a lot. Um, there's a number of European models and a couple American models that I really enjoy working with. So uh, I am working with some new models, but there's probably I don't know 15 or so models that I really connect with that really can tell the story or exhibit the mood and emotion that I'm working with. Um, but I am doing some events as I've retired, and uh, so I have had the opportunity to work with new models and finding models that fit my style all the time. Yeah. So it's, ex it's an exciting process to to work with somebody new that you really that really connects with the work and is passionate and creative and a great collaborator and brings their own self and ideas to the work. So in oh, general, yeah. that's what I'm looking for. Cool. I did say that we've got nine images in uh, today. Uh, I, I wasn't sure which one, if anything, kind of 
set itself apart. So I've left them in there, okay, because obviously we're yeah. pre-recording this anyway, kind of thing. Um, what about this image? Is 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 this something connecting to your landscape kind of beginnings, or is it completely way of far from that? That's interesting. I think for the first two years of shooting art news, maybe maybe because of COVID to some extent, I didn't shoot outside at all. Um, but uh, in the last two years, I've had the opportunity to kind of explore mixing the landscape photography with some art nudes. Uh, this image is part of a series basically on isolation and disconnectedness. Um, the model, there, there's a series probably of about 12, 13 images right now that I'm still working on, where the model is in an, un, in an unusual place in the scene. Um, and again, trying to get across that sense of isolation, the sense of disconnectedness. Um, but I do love the, uh, I, I tend to like um, both close and far away shots. And so in, in interiors, it's harder to take more uh, wide shots. So outdoors, it's a great opportunity to take shots like this that, that uh, and these, these conditions, the model is a superstar here because these conditions were, it was sideways rain and wind, and you can see her hair moving a little bit there, but it was probably the worst conditions I've shot in, and the model was uh, was unbelievable in terms of her posing and, and, and the concept, so. They, they don't have an off switch at times, do they? You know, a true creative model, whether they're fine art nude or a dancer or whatever it is, they, they don't have an off switch until you tell them, right, let's take a break kind of thing with it, because they're so into it themselves. Yeah, the drive, uh, the drive that the top models have is unbelievable. It's more yeah. me trying, me saying, "Are you sure you want to do this? Like, we can, we cannot do this." Um, I, I do say to, to every model that I work with the first time, I, I, I try to be as respectful as possible. And before we shoot, say if there's anything that they're uncomfortable with, even if it's something that they're thinking in their head, "Oh, I'm just going to do this because I'm here," just communicate and we'll do something else because we'll get great shots no matter what we do. So. Um, but the models persist and and push through, and it's uh, yeah, just just such a. As I said before, knowing the models as individuals and as people and their and their personal traits has been a has been something I didn't expect when I when I decided to shoot art needs. And when when they let you into their world as well, and they feel safe and you know you're safe as well. It, it, it's a different collaboration, isn't it, kind of thing with it. You've talked a, uh, quite a bit about um, kind of a mental health. Um, you've used uh, words, you know, like emotion and kind of uh, um, uh, ditto as it were. Um, is there a, a message yet that you're trying to convey, do you think? Is there something underlying in everything that you're doing with fine art or is it too early in your kind of life of, uh, a fine art um, nude photographer. Well, I think the message is almost internal. It's it's a cathartic process for me to kind of explore this theme, um, and it has given me some more perspective on on my family's issues and my own issues. Um, uh, I think the message is that um, this is a theme that um, a lot of the models connect with personally. Um, so I think just an awareness and an understanding and and as it's presented um, in a cohesive way um, in those themes, which my Instagram is not at the moment, I think just just the broader understanding that that uh, mental health struggles are there and they're real and and uh, trying to connect people with that. Um, can you Talk is the perfect image to talk about this one. Uh, the next question was, uh, can you talk? Oh, I've lost it now. Uh, can you walk us through your uh, creative pro process from the the kind of the concept to the final image? What's this image about to begin with? Where how long ago was this shot on these? Yeah, I'm really drawn to the work of uh, Greg Recruitson and Erwin Olaf. Um, that have some of these storytelling, or Prutzen basically does these storytelling type images on a grand scale. Um, so that's kind of the influence here. The, uh, um, this is a rare shot that it's not natural light. Most of my work is natural light. I'm probably 97% of my work is natural light at the moment. 
Um, this is no strobes or, or, or continuous lights. It's all found light in the space. Um, so a lot of what I'm doing these days is, uh, this was in France at a, at a villa that I rented and brought in a few models. And uh, I have the themes that I'm working to and I have the ideas. Um, this is kind of a, the beginning of a series on, again, it's, a, it's about isolation. It's about um, one of the, my daughter and wife were here. And uh, fortunately, my daughter was there because I didn't know how to get static on a TV these days. And so apparently you go to YouTube and you download a static clip and that's how you get to get static on a TV. So, uh, but uh, just the, the, the static of life, kind of isolated um, figure with other figures around them. So even, even a feeling of isolation in terms of um, being with others and, and disconnection. It's an image that um, purposefully so seems like it should be symmetrical. And to some extent it has symmetrical elements, but is not symmetrical in terms of the placement of the lights, in terms of the placement of the models. Um, there's just, in terms of the angle of the carpet, there's just something off about everything. Um, and just trying to kind of tell that story that, that in general, I want the viewer to get, bring their own self to the story. I want it to be somewhat vague, and I think it is vague, um, but that's the story to me. Mm. The um, setting up of the shoot and things, really, how how much in advance? Is it kind of, oh, let's go to France on holiday, and whilst, and whilst we're there, I'll, I'll kind of find some models, you know, a couple of weeks beforehand. How much your prep is involved when you're doing these kind of things? Yeah, the, the models that were here were all models I'd worked with before. Okay. Um, probably set this up a couple months in advance with no clear ideas because you never really know. I, the space matters in my work, um, in a lot of my work, but you never really know what you're going to get until you're there. So there is a bit of a, a high from getting into a space and exploring it and seeing what it's going to give and what the light conditions are going to give, particularly the natural light conditions and how it changes through the day. And, and there's always the, the conditions where you, you think the light's going to do something and then you're 10 minutes late and it's gone from where you thought it was going to be. And so I enjoy the process of creating on the fly. Um, so, but this series was something that I thought about in terms of this disconnection within within a group, which I've shot a, a few times now. Um, but the actual shot was developed after having been there a couple of days and seeing the space. And I, I wanted to shoot kind of an outside in at night shot, and and uh, it took about an hour to figure out the lighting because I had no lights with me. It was just all all the lights in the space, and. Uh, and then I was outside um, and my wife kind of stood at the door and relayed directions to the models and uh, and the shoot itself was probably five minutes. Um, but the setup and the thought process was a lot longer. Is your wife enjoying being involved with the shoots as well and things? Yeah, she's been on two things with me. Normally she stays home, um, but uh, she is the nicest most accommodating person i know i'll just say it that way um, no, no mine is better than yours <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I, I don't know about that mark okay. the, uh, but she she uh, she's been great and very supportive and understands kind of the why i'm doing what i'm doing and and uh, i grew up in a family that didn't sexualize nudity and uh, but nobody in my wife's family was nude outside of their own rooms and so it's it's a bit of a departure for her but uh, but she's been great and supportive and, and has been on a couple of events with me. So, Excellent. Cool. Um, anything else you want to talk about this image? What about the post-production and things? What, what happened? Is there much work in your, is there most, most, sorry, I'll start again, because you answered one question, which was a bit about the lighting anyway, so I've taken that off the table. You're mainly a natural light photographer at present. As far as the post-production is concerned, how, how much are you wor uh, working an image? A fair bit. Um, the one problem with natural light um, is that it doesn't always hit as balanced as you would like it to hit. Yeah. So kind of in the same vein, if you see some of the, the black and white test prints that are marked up uh, for the dark room, I'm doing that type of work to balance the light a lot. 
um, bringing up some shadows. Um, I'm not creating light and I'm not uh, creating shadow, but I'm um, accentuating light and shadow to try to get the feel that I want. Um, trying to get it as right in camera, but when you're using um, found light like this or natural light, um, it's almost never the case that it's as balanced as you want, especially using um, models close to a window. If they're seated, their legs are going to get more light than their faces, even though the face is getting light. So um, accentuating the light on the face and, and, and uh, decreasing the light on the legs, that kind of work is something that I do on almost every image. And then it's contrast and color. And so color here, most of my images have a blue feel to them. Um, this is a little unusual with the orange, but uh, it kind of set the, the kind of surreal nature of the scene, I think, to a certain extent. What your work still kept, uh, stood out for me and I got in touch with you. Um, obviously, you know, I'm a fan, as you know, um, but it was because uh, it's mainly color. And, it, you know, there's a lot of fine art nude photographers specifically um, who basically just shoot black and white. That's all they kind of show. And how was the world of color because it, it's so dominant the color palette within your images and so on with it what what was that decision in your head that went no no i'm going to shoot the world in color as it were is there something that was a switch for you well i think in landscape work when i was doing landscape work i actually liked my black and white work better i liked the tones that i was able to get um one of the problems that i have with black and whites is um, my camera. I struggle to get the tones I want in post-processing with my camera, whereas it's perfect to create a more painterly color image. Um, but I love the I love the, the the storytelling aspect of color, the uh, the ability to. I love images like this that are really one tone, where but 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 lights with with light. Um, but so color was something that I was afraid of initially. Um, uh, my Nikon was too magenta and I didn't have a good feel of it. And and so I worked, I did spend some time with a couple of uh, professional photographers on color work, um, did a couple of Zoom sessions and, and got some of their perspective. And I think that really helped, but I just like the vibrance of color. Um, and I think it depends on the scene. Um, if you're doing bodyscapes and such, I think that in those kind of images, um, black and white is more powerful to me. But in the type of work that I'm doing in terms of the mood, emotion, feeling, story, that the color is just another add to that. Very good. Um, and talking about color, do you use, is it just like Lightroom or... Uh, bridge, camera raw, as it were, or is pretty much all are all the images ed, ending up at some stage within Photoshop, or are you pretty much just color uh, colorizing, you know, using it like a darkroom, in other words, uh, to kind of finish the image? Is there no use of Photoshop? Yeah, so I'm using um, the I developed a pretty. I don't use all of the steps, but I developed a um, workflow over those 130 images in COVID that I processed. And so I follow that for the most part now and not everything works with every image. But basically I'm starting on camera raw and I'm using um, like a 0% hardness brush to, to deal with light, um, to try to balance some of the light. So somewhat of a dark room technique um, with camera raw and uh, then I do bring it into Photoshop. Uh, one of the things in the landscape world that's used a lot is luminosity masks. And so they're a pain to create yourself, but there's lots of uh, actions out there that others have created. Um, and basically they're targeting the individual tones of the image. So, uh, and, and camera raw and Lightroom do this, they just don't do it as elegantly, um, but basically targeting the darkest darks or the mid darks or the mid lights. And so I, I uh, have some processes there. One of the key ones in my work is is uh, with kind of a mid targeting the mid darks is increasing the contrast of just the mid darks in the images, which allows to do images like this, which is dark on dark on dark. Um, and so, in Photoshop, uh, I would retouch if there's retouching necessarily as, necessarily as well. And then I do use 
Um, one of the things that I do from a painterly approach or try to create a painterly approach is I do use multiple camera raw layers. Um, the one thing that, in terms of the tonal contrast of the image, the um, if you if you decrease the highlights and increase the whites, it gives you a more harsh tonal contrast. And if you go the opposite way, it gives you a softer, more painterly tonal contrast. So I fool around with that in images to try to create a softer, more painterly feel. Um, so I, I think my workflow, depending if there's a, a minor amount of retouching, I think the workflow takes me about 45 minutes. And then I sit there and look at it. And if it doesn't feel right, I stare at it for two hours and tweak the color and tweak the contrast. And then usually I give up and post it anyways. So that's, that's, kind, <laughs> of the, that's kind of the process. So let's, let's talk about this image anyway. It's beautiful. What's yeah, the inspiration besides the model? I think, you know, she is the true inspiration of the image, isn't she? You know, um, yeah, in, in terms of posing, I'm not very, I'm very particular about the light and how the light's hitting the model. So in a scene like this, I will micromanage the model to the light. But in terms of the mood and emotion, I'm setting kind of a, I'm, a, I'm hoping they will interpret a mood and emotion that I'm setting in the scene. And that's where finding models that are able to do that are, are absolutely necessary to my work and even bringing their own ideas to that and bringing some of themselves to it. Yeah, um, I know some of the time it would be acted, but but my goal is that they're bringing some of themselves to the scene. So so this uh, this would be kind of a um, uh, the theme here would have, and I don't know exactly what I said, uh, what I instructed the model, but it would have been something like um, coming out of a, a bad time and and kind of accepting the light, kind of a hopefulness, accepting the light um, that there might be something better on the horizon. Um, and then if the model, the model will work through stuff and then I, I'll, I'll, I'll manage if, um, I'm not a very good photographer. I'm, if you see the raws, I'm like, everything's tilted and I'm overshooting it and, and mostly I'm underexposing, which is better for my processing. Um, <clears throat> and making sure the light in some of these scenes isn't blown out. Um, but, uh, um, this was an interesting shoot in the sense that I had a goal last year to work with some models that were also great photographers and shoot with them, kind of taking turns shooting another model just to try to see as an art nude model how they shoot another art nude model and what I could learn from that. And this was one of those shoots. It was in Copenhagen in an Airbnb. <clears throat> and uh, and I was working with another model that I'd shot the day before and she's a very good photographer. And uh, so this is right at the end of the shoot. And this is kind of these soft window light shots are probably the, the, the images that I do best from my perspective. And uh, it's great from a mood perspective. The model's pose and her, her giving in to the, to the mood and emotion. I have a visceral reaction to photos, um, others and my own. And just, okay. That's when I see others' photos, and I, I don't even know why, but I just get connected with it. And this is a pose and an emotion that just I just connect with. Thank you. Um, so, what did you learn from the photographer that you shot, who 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 was a model as well? Was there one thing you went genius, or I like that idea? You know, was there one or more things that you kind of picked up from her? Yeah, I think the main thing, because I'd worked with, I did that three times last year, and the main thing I learned in all three cases was the models move around a lot more than I do, which part of that might be because I'm fat and have a bad knee, but uh, but they're trying different angles where I'm kind of choosing an angle and then I'm varying it slightly. Um, but I think what I've learned and what I've implemented is taking the scene that I see initially and not leaving it at that shooting that and then trying some other angles. And uh, um, the, the models are also more hands-on, not, not physically, but hands-on with the, with the model in terms of micromanaging some of their posing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do that um, when I see something that could create a better line, but um, for the most part, I'm looking 
it, it gets a little static if you do that too too often. Um, and I want something that feels more organic and feels like the model put themselves in the position. And, and so I don't do that very often, but definitely changing viewpoints and perspective and um, taking – for each set, I'm really going for one image. I know a lot of people shoot editorials and shoot – um, multiple shots from the same set, but I'm really looking for one image. But uh, with that process of working with the other models, it's given me some other angles and some other other feels to some of the images that I wouldn't have otherwise got. Okay, cool. Uh, this is the image I was referring to about Vermeer color palette for me. Uh, it kind of reminded me and reminds me of the bather as well and things really, you know. Um, so what's what's behind the image you're obviously a lover of window light no matter what i mean that's the one thing i can kind of in instantly tell you you're almost dipping yourself in window light um what's your thought process with this kind of image this was an interesting shoot it was one that i was a little i was a little worried of whether it would work this is a this is a british model that I'd wanted to work with, but our schedules never aligned. I've been in London four of the last five Januarys for ten days. Okay. Um, and but our our schedules never uh, aligned. Um, she had rented a hotel room in in Exeter um, to do some shoots, and I I had a free day, and so I thought, okay, I'm going to take the train to Exeter, and and I don't do hotel room shoots. Um, I think I've done one other one based on circumstance and uh, sometimes a lot of times the light's not great. I don't really shoot on beds other than as a prop. Um, so it was a little trepidatious going into the shoot, but I really wanted to work with the model. Um, it was a, and, and I booked a four hour shoot because I don't like to be rushed and I want to be able to, to, to chat and talk and get to know the model a little bit as well. And uh, we, this was an exceptionally low light gray day, which I know you guys never get to in the UK, but uh, um, but I do really well with that kind of light. This is probably a shot that was four stops underexposed, um, which kind of, in the processing, kind of gives it the feel um, that it has. Um, but we spent four hours, basically, this was the only corner of the room that had light. Um, yeah. And so we spent four hours in this corner of the room and got, I don't know, five or six portfolio worthy shots. Um, really all credit to the model in terms of her ability to portray a mood and a scene and a, an emotion and, and, and story. And, and so in the end, um, the, the background is important and the setting is important to my images, but the model is the most important. If they, if they can't, um portray something with a feel to it um and then post processing i would have color graded this probably bluer than a little bluer than it was um, naturally um and in that process um i'm using generally photoshop and hsl sliders and camera raw and and uh, photoshop photo filter and color balance and and i'm just going until it feels right very good um Criticism wise and things, do you, you know, have you come across any yet and things as far as, you know, being a fine art nude photographer or creating nudes and things? Are you are you feeling any criticism at all, whether it's uh, around the home, around the community or other, or online? Not really. One of the reasons I think that is, is because I'm using a pseudonym. So um, I'm using Ellis as kind of the the uh, which is part of my last name. And the reason yeah. I did that is from a work perspective. Um, although many of my clients and and some of some of the people at the office know about it, but I, the North American attitude to nudity in general is is not very nuanced. And so I didn't want any any. I, I mentor some younger staff and some younger female staff, and so I didn't want any kind of crossover from that perspective. Yeah. So. Now that I'm um, retired, there's there's less of a need for that. But uh, no, I think even people that are skeptical, when I've shown them the work and I've talked about kind of the why of the work and what I'm trying to do with the work, they seem accepting. Um, so it's not really been um, a problem and criticism doesn't bother me either. I, I actually would like more criticism um, from a from a 
Instagram is full of uh, all positive comments and it'd be nice for somebody to say, hey, um, and some models do this, which I really appreciate is, uh, um, hey, what, what happened with this part of the image? Or you might consider this might make it better. So it'd be, it'd be good to see some more of that kind of feedback and criticism. But in terms of the world of being in art nudes, there's, there's been really very little of that. You don't want to open that door of criticism, I promise you. That'll bring you a whole <laughs> load of uh, uh, different discussions and things, really. Cool. Um, what, what do you think makes fine art nude photography so powerful? Because I find it powerful. I find it not only inspirational, um, but I, 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 whereas, you know, we, we obviously hear comments to do with, you know, um, the female body uh, um, because predominantly it's a, a female nude that we're photographing and kind of the way that the world looks at they they kind of criticize it rather than they don't they see the empowerment you know um not, what, what what makes it powerful for you there's something drawing you to it to make you want to kind of shoot more and more and more and things you know um what is it? Is there an X factor for you? Is there something there? Yeah, I think my original shoots kind of equating nudity to real emotion and real self um, and vulnerab the vulnerability of that. Um, I still hold on to that concept. I think I looked, I I'm shooting more partially clothed shots these days, which a year ago wouldn't really fit into my mindset because I was really holding on to that concept of real self. But I think that really is the key to me is it, it's, it's raw, it's real, it's, um, it's, there's nothing to hide. It's, it's the person. And I think that's really the power to me. Um, I would, in terms of female versus male models, um, I have shot a few male models. I'd be happy to shoot more, but there's not really many um, that do the type of work that uh, that I'm doing, and so it's hard to find male models. Um, but really, the concepts I'm dealing with, it doesn't need to be female models. It's just that the best models that I found are are female models that can deal with the emotion, and because uh, I think a male model, even though I'm um, um heterosexual the male body is still beautiful and so i think there's 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 something there to do if i can find the right models but uh, and i think the other thing in terms of the nudes is because of the, the a lot of my scenes are about darkness and light and the reflectiveness of the nude body is is plays a role in terms of, mm -hmm. of wanting to shoot more nudes the, the majority of male nudes I've shot, in fact, are, are, dan are dancers, specifically ballet dancers. Um, and I know you've got a big uh, ballet community in uh, Toronto. You should really hunt out that because that uh, and and uh, okay. if, if you're ever looking to work with male and female in the same way with it, uh, the dancers absolutely will deliver to you. Anyway, um, back, uh, back to this image. Um, where about is this shot? This is in Utah, and uh, basically we were just wandering around the dunes looking for something that would be, and this model is great. She's a great collaborator. Um, she's great at portraying emotion, um, really a partner in, in the shooting process. And so when I say we, I mean we are looking for something that's interesting. I noticed this flower kind of growing there, and it it kind of had a feeling of of um persevering in a very tough environment um and so that we kind of use that the light kind of fell it's it's a it's a bit of an unusual composition with that piece of light on the right but i kind of like the whole flow of that right light to the light on her back to the light above her her offset with that um flower and and compositionally i think images just feel right to me or they don't feel right to me and so I do often, um, probably 80% of the time, I will overshoot an image. I'm um, using a Fuji GFX 100S, so I have a lot of sensor and uh, pixels to work with. Um, so I will overshoot the images with the idea that I, I can crop it later if I want to. Um, so most images are at least slightly cropped. 
um, to create the composition I'm looking for. Because as I said, in the field, I'm not a great photographer. I'm just trying to get the emotion and the, the technical parts, even though I have a somewhat technical job, I am not interested at all in the technical parts of photography. I barely know how, if I have to go into the menu system of my camera, it's it's a problem. <laughs> so it's, uh, so aperture, shutter speed, ISO, I can deal with those things. Um, but, uh, but so, yeah, so this shot, it just felt, it felt that there was a hopefulness to it, even though clearly she's not in a hopeful pose. So I do like juxtapositions of of uh, um, elements of an image, and mm -hmm. to me this kind of had a a juxtaposition of the hope of the flower growing in this environment with her clearly not very um, happy pose and mood. Um, creative blocks at all? Uh, you know, do you get somewhere and you kind of start in the day off and? kind of it's going good or it's not going good at the beginning have you had any kind of creative block elements yet i've been pretty lucky um creating on the fly because i'm working to those certain themes i've kind of got a box to work in and then it's just about putting the elements together within the scene and i'm really lucky to work with such accomplished models i think it would be more difficult to execute what i'm doing um with models that weren't as accomplished um i wouldn't say that i'm in that right now because i still enjoy shooting what i'm shooting but i am looking for what's next and so it's probably been three or four months of trying to figure out what's next and i do have a couple of things in mind i'm working on three things right now um they're all difficult one's a series of 24 images that have 24 different locations kind of a story mm -hmm. yep. um, One's trying to pair um, some landscape shots that are telling kind of the same story or trying to tell the same story as a as a series of nudes kind of paired together. And I've got the landscape shots, but I'm having trouble with the nudes. So I've got a bunch of ideas. Um, um, so not really any problems yet other than I'd like to branch out, but I'm not really sure what that is. Cool. Um, talk about this image for me. So as I said, I, I've struggled with the tones of black and whites with my Fuji. Um, it comes in very soft to camera raw. People have suggested trying Capture One and, and stuff, but I've, I've been too lazy to do that. And so I've really been working to try to get um, um, the tones to an image. So this is shot just a couple weeks ago. Uh, the model I don't I worked with for the first time last month, and she's unbelievable from an emotion and and channeling whatever mood you know, the image demands. And so I think this is an image that um, I'm really drawn to. I think there's story here, a vague story. You don't know what the story is, but, um, and the black and white is kind of what I, the, the processing of this image in black and white is where I wanna go with black and white processing. I'm just having trouble getting it there on a consistent basis. Um, I've learned to see in a very certain way, in a colorful, painterly way, and I, that, that's great 60, 70% of the time, but the other 30% of the time, I would like something different, and I'm, I'm struggling a bit to do that, and this is, this is an image, a recent image that I thought I actually got where I wanted to get with this image from a, a mood, a story, a, a processing perspective, um, and, uh, yeah, as I said, the model is is fantastic to work with. Mm. The the finish, in fact, it's so different from the the color images uh, in its contrast level. Whereas, the, f f just as a, a, an observation, um, the color just seems so mute. Uh, um, not mute is the wrong word. Um, the tonal range throughout the whole highlight to shadow in the color is much more kind of a blend of one. It's it's almost like it's a watercolor, the color images, and it's kind of almost being blended. Whereas the black and white is 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 more like um what did was it something like color effects pro or black and white effects pro? I can't remember. I'm on about 20 odd years ago now. Um, yeah, silver effects pro still, still, still for effect. is that still going? I don't yeah, know. I, I tried that. Um, in the end, I'm just using Camera Raw to convert it yeah. and then Photoshop. But yeah. I've tried um, Silver FX Pro to varying success. Um, but you're, you're right. And I think 
I love black and white images that are higher contrast. And I love more painterly, softer gradation of the tones, images, and color. And that's one of the reasons I think I'm struggling with the black and white. Um, but uh, I, I think I just that. I just thought of of why it's different. The color images look it's almost like a pre-fogged paper, whereas the black and white. It, uh, so in in the good old days of uh, uh, print and negative and everything else with it. To take away the pure white, we used to pre-fog the paper. And so you never had a pure white. You still had control of all the other tones um, in multi-grade printing. I think for me, that's what this feels like. Whereas the color image, color images have the almost the pre-fog kind of feeling. I, I don't know how to convey that. Uh, I've never talked about that before, in fact. Um, but but that's what this feels like it's missing. It it almost has too much white compared to the others and things. Uh, because this is what I'm more used to. This is more me. This is more commercial fine art nude. Whereas the others are in their own kind of little bubble, as, as it were. Uh, the black and white is totally it. But so far, this is the standout away from the crowd. Whereas I love the crowd rather than the standout, if that makes <laughs> sense. Yeah. Yeah, so um, that's kind of what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to trying to get this. This is the type of black and white image I like. So I'm trying to get there, and I, I think I've got the color images not down because I'm almost never happy with the end result. Yeah. And in real life, I'm not a perfectionist. I'm a big picture thinker, but uh, for some reason in photography, I'm becoming very, very particular about the images. Um, but uh, I am trying to to have a more in your face grittier feel to some images and, and this is one image that that from a black and white perspective and if you're that. and if you're printing your images um are you going out to a photo lab or are you printing in-house i have yet to print um and then this is one thing that um really photography has been an escape from work for me so i'm either shooting or processing and haven't done much else and so okay. In November of last year, there was a sale on printers, and I bought a printer, and it's still in its box. Um, but now I've got some time, hopefully, to open that box and, and explore that. The uh, I have a, I have went to a local printer to try to get some um, of the a couple of, of art nudes printed. Um, they had a lot of tonal range in the blacks, and the printer wasn't able to to represent the blacks. They were muddy um um so so i think my challenge i, I do want to print some work uh, my challenge over the next year is to to fool around with myself and find a printer that can to replicate the feel i want on screen uh, well i'm excited to actually see what you're going to do with your images anyway uh, okay this next image yeah this is uh this is at the model's house actually kind of a good example of the fleeting nature of light um, shooting natural light um, i've made the mistake too many times of oh that light's really nice we'll get to it in like three minutes and then the light's no longer that light and yeah. so this is an image where we caught the light it was a actually a patio door very harsh side lit um, a lot of times I'm traveling. I'm not traveling with the reflectors. There was probably no reflector here. The the light on her stomach is being created by the bounce off of her leg is acting as the reflector. So um, using those kind of tricks to to if they compositionally work to try to try to make the scene work from a light perspective. Um, so just kind of a found image of oh, oh here's the light. Let's do this and her. Um, body position and tension and facial expression is to me perfect for for what I was going for here, um, and I think the light um, adds to that and adds some mystery to it and and there's a strength to it even though she's in a down position to me and uh, again kind of like the juxtaposition of of some strength and and even her really observing the viewer of the photograph and not just the observers of the photograph observing her so that's kind of the feel of it but really i included it just because of the the, the it was kind of a okay let's do this quick the light's there 
Um, oh, we got some bounce light off your leg. Let's adjust for that. And uh, so just being quick and, and flexible and, and t I think I took myself out of another set to do this. Um, just reacting to the conditions as they present themselves, um, I think is important in my work. Mm. Love, loving the tone there, um, seriously. Uh, I'll, I'll ask the image we're gonna chat, chat about. Um, uh, before we get onto the image, how how do you go about choosing your models? Do you have a particular kind of body style, body shape um, that you're particularly looking for when you're choosing uh, a model? You know, this is no different than an artist would choose a model uh, if they were painting them, isn't it? There's something to inspire them. Is there some body shape or look or kind of uh, a body size that kind of uh, depicts on whether you're booking them or not, or you're going to start the conversation? Not really. Um, a lot of freelance art models come in uh, a particular body style, but uh, um, I, I would like to work with more plus size models because really to me, it's their ability to create emotion with their body and their face. Uh, and, and, and not the pose of the body, but just the drop, how they drop their body into a position um, and the ability to create a mood and emotion that, that, that I'm looking for. Um, this was a model that I that uh, she hasn't been a model for very long. She's a contemporary dancer, yep. um, and she uh, I think she's been modeling for a year. And I've shot with her twice now because she is just unbelievable at putting her uh, aligning her face and body position and, and telling a story or creating a mood. And and when I'm looking, I, I have shot some models that are glamour models where I've looked at their portfolios and it's mostly glamour, but I've seen something in the way they're posing or their expressions that I think is going to work for my style. And so I'm I, whatever um, wherever the whatever the model does, I'm looking for their ability to create story and emotion. And uh, body style is secondary. My goal in images, and it's not always the easiest to do, particularly particularly on Instagram, based on the number of likes that some images get versus others, is that I, I want the nudity to be secondary. I want people to look at her face here first and how she's holding her shoulders and that the nudity is is not the main focus of this image um but that's up to the viewer but that's my goal so um funny enough you just talked about the instagram it's one of the kind of the questions to come how how do you feel about the censorship of new uh, nudity on instagram have you got any opinions on it at all uh not a very big fan uh, <laughs> i think uh, it's not just the censorship, it's the ability to get your work out there. I was lucky that organically my account grew four years ago. In, in two years, it grew with a couple of stops along the way. It grew consistently really fast. And uh, two and a half years after I started, I had um, 46,000 followers. Wow. And now the problem is I've got... Two two years after that, I've got fifty one thousand followers. So it's not just the censorship uh, of the images themselves, but it's the ability to get people to see your work, um, which is significantly being curtailed. I set a secondary account up on Instagram, and <clears throat> and it's uh, I think uh, it's got four almost four thousand followers in over a year, which that wasn't my experience with my initial account. So I think it's gotten worse, not better. And uh, there's lots of talk uh, about people doing other things and setting up other things that are allow not safe for work uh, imagery, but nobody seems to be able to do it on uh, and get it much engagement. So, so I think it's for, for art nude photographers, I think it's a constant challenge to be able to, um, I think most people produce work, I think for themselves, but it's always nice to have, get other people to see it and get their perspective and, and and what others see about your work so that's getting harder and harder i think do you like likes yeah you know when you kind of post an image on instagram are you um you know are you really doing it because you you want kind of the feedback or you want the kind of the the compliment of a like and things really how does it feel to you because i'm a little bit torn with it to be honest because obviously it's a sharing plat platform 
compared to Twitter or even Facebook to some extent, which is a little bit more conversational. But Instagram really is a, a kind of a quick scroll and an interact with a like or not kind of thing with it. Are you, are you posting for likes? I think it's in two buckets. I think the general fandom on Instagram, I'm not really interested in the likes. Other photographers that I respect and models that I respect, I think that's important in terms yeah. of uh, getting your work appreciated. Um, I think uh, followers and likes are never, I don't think there's any downside to it. So I do post very frequently. I'm, um, I think when you, I, I'm not sure what I want to do in the future. I, I, I don't know if I want to try to monetize photography in any way. Um, but uh, having more followers and likes is not a downside if, if I ever want to do that. So that's kind of in the back of my mind from a likes perspective and a followers yeah. perspective. But uh, yeah, so I, I would say I do care about model and, and photographer likes and comments particularly. But, uh, but yeah, I, I know that the images I like the best are going to get one fifth of the likes that some more. Um, in your face, movie shots would get so. Yeah. Um, so where's the future now? What are you doing? What's the um, great images? Thank you. Anyway, uh, Dave. Um, well, what's your plans in the next, you know, six six months, twelve months? I know you've just spent a long time in Europe, kind of um, shooting and everything else with it. What's what's going on? What's in Dave's head? What are we gonna see next? Yeah, my goal, whether I can hold to it or not, is going to be the problem, is to, uh, I, I've uh, got a, a real backlog of work now after shooting so much the last six months. And so catching up on processing is good. My goal is to not do much shooting the next six months, but it's always tough because you got models that are contacting you and saying, hey, I'm, I'm going to be in your area. I'd love to shoot. Uh, and so keeping me away from saying yes to that is, is going to be a problem. But uh, but catching up on processing, really evaluating the work and curating my own work. And to, I do have a website, but it's not really public consumption. I use it kind of as a as a uh, mood board for models. And it's got too much information on it. There's too many photos on it. And it's not well culled and it's not well updated. So kind of uh, revisiting my own work to kind of see where I'm at. And uh, um, I think those are the two priorities in the next six months. And then figuring um, any, out what's next as well. Any advice that you'd give to aspiring fine art nude photographers? People who are just thinking, I'd love to do that, but haven't kind of taken the inspiration or actually the courage to actually do it yet. Any advice to them? Yeah, I think starting, I think with people photography, not starting with nudes is probably um, starting with um, clothed um, shots is probably a, a good way to start. That's kind of what I did and then transitioned. I think as with anything, it depends, I guess it depends on the person's background. If they're already a people photographer, um, it's one thing, but if you're not, if you haven't even done much of that, I think all photographers in all genres have to learn to see. And I think, um, being a consumer of others' works and looking at what you like and what you um, what you aspire to and what you connect with um, and why you connect with others' work is a real big um, a stepping stone to creating your own style and your own work. And one of the things I did was I tried to mimic some photographers' styles um, with not the intention of continuing to mimic the style, but just to see how I could get to what they're getting to and, and and it's a great learning process and then um i with from a different bunch of different sources I, I i developed my own style so i think um people have different views on that but i think my biggest advice would be to be a consumer of work and to really understand why you like the work that you like mm -hmm. and would you advise them going on a, a course or kind of um a, a kind of a shoot event and things really would you i know that you've done it several times yourself would you encourage that to begin with yeah i think so i think even uh, a workshop rather than an event where there is actually a photographer that's kind of helping you 
I think uh, going from landscapes to people photography, and I observed this with others as well, is just communicating with models is one, one if not the key to the success in the photographs at the end, uh, for me at least. And uh, that's a learning process, and a lot of a lot of people are too quiet and don't know what to do or what to. So, so observing other photographers do that, I think, would be one of the keys from my perspective in terms of actually finding a workshop where you can observe a professional photographer do that and observe other amateurs do that as well. Dave, thank you so so much. It's been absolutely exhilarating seeing your images, and uh, great to actually chat with you. Uh, we've got a date and a year's time now. You realise that because we have it on camera that you said it kind of thing with it, you know. Uh, but brilliant. Um, uh, uh, get this website up and running because uh, you know it's just a shame there's Instagram where people don't get your concept yet. Uh, yeah. And you've talked some beautiful emotional words today, and I would encourage anybody to kind of uh, listen again and again to what we've kind of chatted about today, because I think um, for a fine art nude photographer and such a new fine art nude photographer to have such an in-depth vision is is quite um, beautiful to hear, to be honest, Dave, you know. Um, uh, you, you, you've got some real in, insight to your work and coming from a world of numbers to the world of creative, oh my God, um, I, I, <laughs> you come from two poles and uh, it's been really great to hear and things, but, um, and, and some really wise words you've, you've had uh, and thank you for sharing it and things really. Yeah, thanks a lot, Mark. I really, uh, really appreciate the opportunity and uh... I'll, uh, I'll go put in my calendar uh, next 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 July. So we're good. It's a date. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Dave. See you soon, mate. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks, Mark.